I'm going to be working in ink tents. I'm going to be painting a dolphin tail. You can get this reference photo over at my website, lawcree.com. This is a five by seven. I am working on 300 pounds of Fabriano Artistico extra white hot press watercolor paper. Not because I recently bought some, because I don't really buy their paper anymore, because they changed it and I don't like the newer ones, but because I have some left over, so I may as well go through what I've got. So that is what I'm working on tonight. And the alternative, my normal would be my Arches hot press watercolor paper, but I didn't have any 300 pounds, so and I didn't get a chance to stretch it, so that is why we're going with this. When it comes to Lightfast, a common question or common misunderstanding from people is, what is the difference between Lightfast and Permanence? Because these are listed as being permanent. The difference between these and watercolor, that is basically what that means by permanent. When you put a layer of the ink tents down, I'm gonna do a, a quick little demonstration of that for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take some water, and the water that I'm using tonight is distilled water since this is being made available for sale. I wanna give this, and actually let's cover that first. So use distilled water or tap water. Normally with ink tents, I just use tap water because I'm not selling it, I'm not too worried about it. But when it comes to watercolor, water soluble graphite, and in tonight's case ink tents because I'm breaking my own rule and selling it, I want to use distilled water because there is a lot of crap in our tap water, like a lot. And that can, ink, can contribute to yellowing paper or maybe the light fastness would not be as good because you're using, who knows what, they, they use so many different things in our water. So I use distilled water when I'm painting with my water mediums. Again, watercolor, water soluble graphite and tonight ink tents. Normally I don't worry about it. If it's just like in a sketchbook or something like that, then I just use regular tap water. But for anything I'm gonna sell, I wanna go with distilled because I wanna give this its best chance to not fade. So what is Lightfast? Lightfast ratings are what we use to determine how long it will take for a color to fade. When in museum standard lighting or museum quality, something like museum something lighting. With ink tints, some are Lightfast, some are not. It, they're questionable as to which ones are, it, it's hard to keep track in this sort of a palette, which ones were which, unless I wanted to separate them all, which I'm not going to do. So anyway, that is what the light fast is. Now, what a lot of people talk about is permanence. Now these are permanent, that is not the same thing. What they mean by permanence, let me go ahead and load some, I've got a pretty purple here. So you can see I'm dipping the paintbrush in water and I'm just gonna mix that in with what is there. I'm mixing that with water again. So I'm using this like I would a pan of watercolor. I'm not taking the block and going directly onto the paper. So when I come back over here to the palette, let's move you out of the way for just a moment. I make my mark. So I'll leave that to dry. I'm also going to show you though what will happen if I were to take that color and just shade it in with, I've got the pencil or the block itself and I'm shading it. Now, this is a cool technique. I've used it before when I wanted to create a lot of texture. So I'm not saying don't ever do that, but I do want you to see what happens when you do. So here, if I just take water, let me rinse actually all of that off. So just some water and I'll blend that out pretty well. Now let me dry both of those. Stay up there. Probably should have taped that for this demonstration. Now, if that is dry, this is not dry all the way. Actually, let me grab another paper towel while that sets for just a second. That would need to be dry all the way in order to be permanent. So that's one of the first mistakes that people make when they talk about that the color lifted off. It is dry to the touch right now. Let it, the paper cool. When the paper is cool, if that ink feels cold, and this is ink, it's not watercolor, it's water soluble ink. If that feels cold to the touch, it's not really dry all the way, make sure, I'm just waiting for the paper, the paper itself is too warm for me to be able to tell. You wanna make sure that that is all the way dry. If not, it's not, it can reactivate easier. Watercolor will reactivate at any point, more so when it's slightly wet, obviously. But what happens is if it's a little bit wet and you go over it thinking that that has set, it hasn't set yet, it's not completely dry. And so that's gonna be more likely to smudge out. It's a little cool as the paper cools off. You get the idea. So if it smudges a little, that is most likely why. So if I take water over it, it smudges a little, not too much. If I did that with watercolor, it's gonna smudge a lot more than that. But if I smudge over this, this is where you're really gonna see the difference. This one will normally smudge more and be darker because some of the, when I went over it with a pencil, it, it's not 
all those little nuggets, you can kind of see the grainy gritty look. The, the pigment, even though I got it wet, it didn't reactivate all of it. So those chunks will continuously reactivate because it was never really blended in all the way. Whereas when I mixed it this way, it was blended more. So there is, as I like, see, and now that it's been wet because it wasn't dry all the way, I'm, I'm reactivating that more. But it, and even when I've had it completely dry, it may smudge a little bit, not this much. I said that one was still a little bit wet, but it's not to the extent that watercolor. Watercolor can lift all the way, whereas this, when it's really dry and it's really set and you didn't apply it with block itself, but you actually mixed it separately, it really stays in place very, very well. I've had a few times have it smudge a little bit when I thought it was all the way dry, but it was pretty minor, no big deal to go over. So that's really what they mean by permanent. It's gonna stay place, stay in place. They use this on fabrics and people will paint t-shirts or shoes or whatever, and it's supposed to, I've never done that, so I don't know how well that works. I've heard people like it, I don't know. But that kind of gives you a better idea of what they mean by permanent. Now this, is worse with its smudging if you use the pencil. So you, you shade things in with the pencil. I have never ever been able to blend things that I shaded with the, the Inktense pencil directly, blended enough that it didn't reactivate. I always have chunks in there that are just not all the way blended. The only way that I get things all the way blended is here in the palette like I did the first time, you know, and let it dry all the way that I don't have time to do tonight. But that should give you an, an idea of what it means permanence versus light fast. Permanence means it stays put, it's not really reactivating, again, if you let it dry all the way. Uh, and I mean really dry, not just dry to the touch, and that's the, the difference that I think a lot of people are missing. When you touch it, if it's a little cool, that is not dry all the way. Mine was not really dry all the way. So anyway, hopefully that is helpful. Um, but light fast is an issue of whether or not it'll fade. I am going to come through and do some of my dark lines first. Now what I like to do with ink tents is have a scratch piece of paper all the time. So when I'm picking my color, what it looks like here, and the same thing with the pencils, it does not look the same when you add water. So what I like to do is make a little test to watch see which color I like. So let's see, how about you? Yeah, no, how about you? No, not loving it. I'm oh, you know what, it may be one of these that I'm looking for, or are you just black? You might just be black mixed with the purple on the brush. No, you are the color I want. Okay, come over here. I'm gonna move this down here. I have no idea what color this is, some dark blackish purple color. It's entirely possible. That's really just black mixing in with the color there. No, I think it really is a black purple. Okay, so what I'm doing is mixing that just like I would with a, a pan watercolor, thinning that with water, and I'm gonna line everything out. Because when I do my wash with the ink tents, this is pretty much gonna stay put. It's not gonna move a whole lot. Now I'm gonna make my water. Now my water is not going to be exactly like the reference photo that I'm just using as a loose guideline. Now the, the trick to making water look like water, you wanna go long horizontal, short diagonal. So I don't want a whole lot of diagonal shapes in here. So see, short diagonal, long horizontal, short diagonal, long horizontal. And that is pretty true anytime I'm doing water. And I've gotta be careful because of the way that I'm sitting for the camera, the camera's really in my way so it makes me want to tilt. I'm gonna have to keep backing up and making sure I've got that right. You don't want it to look like your whole water is leaning to the side. See how long horizontal, short diagonal. Long horizontal, short diagonal. And by doing this now, it makes it easier because when I come on top with my teal and my turquoise, I just glaze over everything. It makes it so easy. This stays put as long as it's dry. Or I should say this mostly stays put. Stays put more than watercolor. Now this photo, it came from, I think, Unsplash or Pixabay, I forget which one. And it was the entire dolphin and his whole body was out of the water. He was doing like working with trainers and um, his tail was up against water, but he, he was not in the water. His tail wasn't in the water. I just used that as a reference and the water behind it as a general idea. That is all kinds of Photoshop to make it look like it's going into the water this way. So that is something you can do because it can be sometimes really hard to find photos of dolphins and whales that are in the position you want. If you find photos where they're working with a trainer, you can take parts and make them stick out of the water like this. Like the entire dolphin really was out, but we made it work. 
And this brush, it is a number four synthetic hair, um, hog haired script liner brush. And I just not pushing very hard. I like the longer brush because I can load a lot of the ink in it and make a huge long brush stroke. If you used a super little, like tiny little bristled brush, what happens is you, you make a little line, up, oh, time to reload, little line, time to reload, and you end up with something that looks really fluffy instead of these long lines that I can get with these brushes. Now the next tip I have for you on making water look shiny, making it look more realistic, is high contrast. So that's what you can see, I'm getting my darks in now, but you want your really dark darks right up against your really light light. So when I put the highlights with the white, I need that to be super bright and they'll look brighter if my darks are even darker. Now for the ink tints, I don't find them to be quite as picky on the quality of brush as watercolor. So I usually just use whatever I have for, for my acrylic paints, and which is generally generic brushes. I know I recently had my video talking about why I don't shop at Hobby Lobby or Michaels anymore because I don't like all of the generic problems. I like our pro products, not problems. Um, I like the generic paint brushes though. So that is the one generic product that they carry that I actually like. And that's what I'm using here tonight. I'm gonna use this purple to block in a bunch of these darker ones, or darker areas. So let's see, we're gonna come around here. And I'm just gonna spread this. Now here's where it gets challenging with ink tents versus watercolor. With ink tents, when that sets, I'm gonna have a harsh line there. If you don't want a harsh line, you better blend that quick. The reflection on the tail does not need to be exact. He's got little lines going through, like little tiny little lines that look to me like power lines. I will definitely not be including those. I'm just using this purple for the shadow. You could technically use your black for the shadow too. Uh, my next tip for this is let's say you needed a light gray. Well, there's no light gray in the set. Yeah, you just use black and thin it out with water and let the white of the paper make it more gray. You could also technically blend it with or mix it with the white ink tents um, block to make it gray if you wanted a, an opaque gray. Like let's say you were going up against an area that was already dark and you needed it lighter gray, then I would mix it with white to get that color. He is not gonna say purple, don't worry. The whole area here we wanna darken up a bit. Let's get some of these more definite dark areas. This will all get toned down quite a bit when I go over it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and dry this. And I'll show you what I mean by, even if it smudges a little, it's not a big deal because the other color, the pigment is so strong in these. Now, the longer I wait here, the less likely it is to smudge out, even though it feels dry. So it, it can be quite deceiving. Um, let's see, can colored pencil be layered over ink tints similar to watercolor? <sighs> Kinda. Yes and no, I mean you can. It doesn't stick as well as it does to watercolor, so it's not my favorite. I usually, when I use ink tents, do not 
do mixed media, whatever it is about the way the ink tint sets, it it's almost too, it doesn't feel slick when you touch it, but it's like too slick for the colored pencil. It doesn't stick that well. Wax-based, I've found usually will stick better, but a harder lead tends to more scrape the ink tints than really stick to it. Whereas watercolor, it just full on sticks to it. So it's not my favorite mixed media at all. It's not dry all the way. It's going to smud, smudge out some, but close enough. So let's go ahead and bring these teal colors back over here. Let's see, this one looks like it might be dark enough. I'm going to test just like I did before. Only hopefully this time I actually remember to move the camera. Ooh, oh my gosh, that's perfect. That is such the perfect color. Okay, now these, if you get the ink tents where it comes in these little, I don't know if this new ones still do because this is an older one. If they have these little um, whole containers, what I like to do is wipe those out with paper towel. And this is where I mix my little batches, but this will all reactivate. So being that it has old color in there, if I were to go over it, whatever the old color is, would just mix in with what, it, like see how it just wipes up, like no problem. So I wanna make sure that's clean before I start mixing a new color into one of those little sections. And it doesn't matter how long that's sat dry, it is going to reactivate. Only over plastic. Plastic or glass or anything like that, it'll reactivate. If it's on fabric or paper, it's pretty much gonna stay put. So that's close enough that it looks like there's a little bit of a green tint in there, so that wouldn't matter if that mixes. I'm using a round brush now. Now when you get ink tints, you will often get them and the blocks are broken in pieces like this. That is not worthy of being upset about or sending them back because no matter what you do, these break, they're very brittle. They break super easy. And actually, I'm going to just put that to the side and use a smaller section of it because it's easier. I will normally break mine on purpose just because they're a little bit easier for me to stick to the side here. I am going to start with these darker areas. So we're just gonna fill that in. I'm gonna take a mop brush and just soften that out where it's not quite smooth. And so this is just a normal mop brush, um, a blush brush. What I use for acrylic painting woodwork, this one is a mop brush for actual, like it's an actual art one. I don't even care if I'm completely in the lines of those purple lines, those will show through a little bit later, that is fine. And then I'll wipe that off just a bit. Line that tail again, be careful right around there. And then smooth that. Again, it doesn't really matter if I smudge a little bit out because I've got to fill that in later anyway. But I do want to make sure that I don't have too many harsh lines that are not, like I had a, a definite line where I outlined that, where it wasn't smooth, that I want to smooth out. Let's see. And this is really one of the things that I find to be the biggest difference between the ink tints and the watercolor. With watercolor, like right here where I've got all these brush strokes, you just keep working it with the watercolor and even if it dries, it doesn't matter. You can rework it and soften all that out. With ink tints, when it dries, those streaks are staying because it's permanent. Sometimes that's a great thing. Like right here, see how I can go right over the purple? No big deal because that is staying put. And by, I'm using the same color just by adding more water it just makes it that lighter teal color. Now I would say for me anyway, I found ink tints to be easier to get the hang of than watercolor by a long shot. Like ink tints to me, the way that I layer them are very, very similar to how I layer acrylics. So it was a very easy transition in my case. The brushes are very similar. Like everything is really close. And so I f they are why I finally felt comfortable enough to go ahead and use um, watercolors. Because watercolors are one of the more difficult mediums, I would say. A lot of people think that watercolors are the easiest. I used to have students do that all the time. They would want to do watercolors thinking it would be the easiest. And they would avoid oils thinking oils are the hardest. It's really the reverse. I actually think oils, when teaching anyway, I found it to be easier to teach someone oil than acrylic or a lot of other mediums.
as long as I could be there to show them when things needed to dry or, you know, stop and let it dry before you move on. I don't care if some of these are lighter or darker. I actually prefer that. We want to get some variation in here. See, long horizontal, short diagonal. But I'm working in smaller sections too, because as this dries, it's going to create streaks if I don't work them out quickly. Now, one thing that you can do to avoid that and have a smoother look, but I'm making mine dark, so that's why I'm not. But one of the things that you can do is add water first. So let's say this one. If I add water in here first, that will stay wet so that this will go on now smoother and I won't have as, be as likely to have the brush strokes. But the flip side is that also means it's going to be a little bit lighter. The ink tents I feel compared to watercolor, I don't know. I just always felt when I worked with them, I didn't have as much, or maybe I was just putting too much pressure on myself with the watercolor, but it, it really made it easy for me when I did start. I started with watercolor pencil first, got the hang of that, and then went to watercolor pans. But I honestly credit ink tents to, to me getting comfortable. And it may just be, like I said, I'm used to, to acrylics is one of my primary mediums, so ink tents just make sense to me the way I layer it. Now I'm going to come through and make some of these darker ones. And I don't, I'm not trying to cover my purple all the way. I want to get that variation. Get these little rings. And this is fun because what I'm doing right now Filling in the rest of this will go so fast and so easy because of what we're building up here. Like this is really the longest portion of this, but make sure these lines are smooth. You do not want a bunch of, um, you don't want it to look fluffy. You don't want a bunch of short sketchy lines in here. So again, that long horizontal short diagonal. Just keep that, like saying that to yourself whenever you do anything with water and you've got ripples in the water. And I want to actually keep this fairly dark around the tail here so that the tail stands out more. Now see how I'm starting to build up more of these darker ripples? Okay, now I'm going to dry this and then we can put the lighter colors on Actually, hold on, I'm missing a couple of spots here in the center. Getting a little too ahead of myself here. Because if I don't go dark here, when I come back through with the white highlights, they're not going to stand out much because I don't have the dark next to it. That's better. Okay, now let's dry it. To get the color where I want, so let's see. Oh no, that is gorgeous. That blue, it's a little overexposed here. It is so pretty. Oh, I'm excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of water. See how I just keep reworking that and I'm making this ink mixture. Thin that out, add some more. If I want it to be a lighter color, add more water. 
Okay, and I'm just gonna wash that right over this, over the light and the dark. And this looks more blue on the camera. It looks more, a little bit more aqua to me in person. See why I did the dark first? Look how much easier I'm making my life just being able to go right over everything. I'm gonna dry that because it's really wet. I don't want it to run. It is starting to run in a couple of spots. Let's smooth that out. See anywhere where it's more water, that's gonna be lighter. Okay, let me try that. Now before I start with the white highlights, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the dolphin tail just a bit. Actually, pens, I'm gonna use the pencils on a few areas, but I'm trying to decide. No, let's go ahead and do a glaze of gray over the tail and get some of the darker. Actually, no, I'm gonna do some. See, there's so many different ways with art. That's the fun thing. There are so many different ways to get to the same end. My mind is constantly like, wait, Will this be better? No, that one's faster. No, wait, but if I do it that way, that's gonna make this part harder. You're constantly working out problems in your head. As an artist, you are a problem solver. That is what you do. So it's, there's never like, I always know this is the order I'm gonna do it in, and then I'm gonna do this. There's so many different ways to get to the same end. Yes, let's go ahead and make a grayish purple to put over that, and then I'm gonna go over it with the, um, the pencils. So I'm gonna mix black with a bit of the, well, maybe with some of the teal. See if those two colors work. Yeah, that works okay. I'm just gonna wash that right on over this. Now, I used a bit of the teal so that it has that reflection look of the water. The same teal I used in the background is what I mixed in with that black. But I used a lot of water and that's why it's such a light gray right now. Let's mix a little bit more. Make it a little bit darker than that. One of the things I love with ink tints, and I think that's probably why I got comfortable with this first before I was comfortable, more comfortable with the watercolor, is with the ink tints, the white is just a normal part of how I work. You're not really building, it doesn't have to stay translucent to work. It's almost somewhere a little bit closer to gouache in some ways. Gouache is just opaque watercolor, but a lot of this felt a lot like gouache to me. Okay, let's darken it up even more. As I'm building this, I keep thinking, yeah, a little bit more because then I'm just gonna put mostly highlights with, with the white pencil. So right now it looks like everything's like way too dark, but I'm going to come back on top with white. But also see how I'm doing it translucent enough, I can still see some of what I did before. And that scratch piece of paper I have next to my palette, I cannot recommend that enough because I can test, did I mix enough water? Should I add more water? Is the color, did I even grab the right color? These are so similar. When you look at the palette, like some of these colors look almost exactly the same. I always test it on my scratch piece of paper first. Okay, let's try that and then we'll grab some pencils. Now, as I'm looking at this, I don't like this glob of light up there. Really quick before I move on, I'm gonna darken that up because that's not cute. It's just standing, it's drawing my attention up there in a very odd way. So let's just darken some of this up. So 
So let's slide these over. Now here's the thing with ink tense pencils. It is not the same as using colored pencils. So like some of these colors you look at and it like a light blue. Like this one, see how it has kind of a light blue at the end? The actual color it comes out is not light. Actually, that one kind of looks light right now, but <laughs> that just made a liar out of me. But it generally will be darker. If I go over a dark color, oh, this is wet. But if I go over a dark color, mostly the pencils make things darker. They don't lighten it up. Like if I put a light blue colored pencil, at, well, a wax-based one anyway, over when I'm working in colored pencil, it will lighten it. The ink tents, most of these colors are just gonna darken it. So that is just something to be aware of. Like you've got these pink colors. This is a, actually a better example. Look at the pink one, look how light that is, but the actual color, those aren't even close. So this is another one you wanna test. And you also wanna test, what is that gonna look like when you put water on it? Cause that can be different. With enough water, then it, it is kind of close to that. So it's not that it can't be this color, but it's not gonna be that color unless it's on top of white paper. So I always like to put the pencils on top of where I've already gone. I'm only going to darken it. I am not going to be lightening things up. If I need to lighten it, I've got to put white down first. And it's not that the color can't, like I said, up against the white, that lighter lavender color, it can be, but we're not going up against the white. So now it can't. If I wanted this color, or I wanted to take this pencil and make it lavender, I would put the white ink tense block down first, paint it on there, let it dry. Now I would be up against white and I could make it work that way. So actually, let's move this so you guys can see. That is perfect. That is such a pretty color. Green aquamarine. You are a keeper. I think you're gonna to be too, oh, that's way too green. So this one was mallard green. Yeah, that is definitely not the green we want. So let's put that back. And then of course the black. So let's see when I add water, how all of these look. So we've got, it's not even as green though. I get, eh, I may need a different pencil there. There's the gray and then of course the black. Okay, so the gray I actually really like, it's a bluish gray. So now that we've got an idea, let's go ahead and start shading in. Oh, where's my white? Okay, so let's go ahead and start shading. This will lighten it, but it won't go quite as bright as the ink tense block, which is good. We'll keep the ink tense block for our lightest white. Let's see how I can start shading now. Now, if I go over this with water, which I don't wanna do, if this part I go over with water, it pretty much just disappears. You don't even see it anymore. And when it dries, it kinda comes back, but not, again, not like the Inktense block. But if I did this with the Inktense block, it would be too bright. So this is a nice, happy medium. And it sticks much better than colored pencil would. Colored pencil just does not stick well to this. Now I find that I can get finer detail with the ink tense block and a fine liner brush than I can with the pencils. So something to keep in mind, if you can only get one ink tense block or ink tense pencils, I go with the block. The blocks are so versatile. You can get super fine detail. You can get thick, like fill in an entire block backgrounds. If I could only use one, that's what it would be. But I do prefer using both together like you see me doing here. Now this will need to have more of the blue, but I need to put white down first. Otherwise the blue is just not gonna show up. I'll probably end up having to come back through with the Inktense block and then blue on top of that. Clean up these edges. So here's where we can correct, like if your lines, if they were like mine and they weren't perfectly smooth, no big deal, they're all cleaned up now. I'm really focusing on where those highlights go. Now, right now, this feels like it's not bright enough. No big deal. We're going to be darkening those up when we put the darks in. Wow. We're going to darken it up when we put the darks in. Super redundant there. Now, I'm copying the highlights pretty close to what the reference photo is, except for those lines. The, the power lines don't need to be included or whatever those were. Not a whole lot of power lines out in the ocean usually. And I'd rather this look like he was out in the ocean. Bring this 
this will go over with the blue so it's not going to stay white right there. Okay, let's darken some of this up. I think the Payne's Gray is going to be my go-to here. Yeah, that's nice. Not too dark. I think the black would have been too much because this is definitely working. Now, here's the thing. A little bit of the pencil goes a long way. I don't think that I need to go over any of this with water, but if I did, it like seriously, a little area of shading, like, oh look, I just put a teeny tiny amount. And then you go over it with water, well, that doesn't have any water on it. You go over it with water and it's like, and now that's everywhere. Like it really takes, it can take over. So be careful with that when you're doing something like this. Like if, if I go over it just a little bit, don't go crazy smudging that around because that will spread. This is not like using OMS on colored pencil. This stuff spreads. Got a darker bit down here. And let's see how well that blue, actually, I'm gonna switch to the light blue for that. I think this is gonna be too dark. Maybe if I go over it light. Oh no, there we go, over the white. That is showing up pretty good. That actually worked. Again, cleaning up these, and I may, Tomorrow, when I come back with fresh eyes, I'll probably clean up a couple little spots on this. Pull this shadow down. This I'm definitely going to blend with the OMS, though. Or not OMS, with water. I've been working with too much with colored pencil lately. And I can do the same shading. Let's say I wanted to do more shading in the water. I don't actually like how the water looks, but let's say I wanted to darken an area. Excuse me. It looks better in person. It looks a little bit lighter, washed out on the, the video, but I'll show you on this camera in a moment. But if I wanted to, you can sit there with your pencils and do more shading and then blend that out too. Like they're so, this is why I love using the two together. I think it's easier using both than just one or the other. But again, if just one, go with the blocks. The pencils, you can do everything just with the pencils too. I, I think that they're just, it takes a little bit more work if that's the, if you're just doing that. Because trying to fill in the whole background can be more. But I've got videos showing you how to do it. So it can be done. And we want these dark areas pretty dark so that when we put those shiny bits on, it looks really bright. And I don't want too much water here because I don't want to make a hot mess. Just going over it a little bit. The water brushes, Dermot water brushes are my favorite. I have one here, but it doesn't have anything in it because I didn't think to fill that before I started. But these things are super handy. You just squeeze the end of it and water comes out so I don't have to keep reaching back and dipping it in my water. Super, super handy. And I've tried them by a few different brands and some off brands. I definitely like Derwin's the best. You know, when I blend at this point, I'm much more controlled than those initial layers. Okay, I really like that. Let's go ahead and I am now, actually I'm gonna do a few little lines with the pencil to lighten it before we go on with the white, which will be really light. Just lighten a few bits. This, again, not going to blend out that white pencil. That does not give me results I like. You can see I also don't need it to be super sharp. It works just fine and it goes on really smooth. So like a colored pencil, if it starts getting dull like this, sometimes you'll get that grainy gritty look where it's just hitting the tooth of the canvas, like the top. This doesn't really do that. Just 
just going around what's already there. A little bit of detailing. And this also allows me to clean up some of those edges that weren't quite smooth enough. It's such a forgiving medium. I've always loved, it's been way too long since I worked and I forgot how much I enjoy, like it's just so much fun. Okay, let's get some really bright white highlights with the Inktense block now. So let's move these out of the way actually. And I am going to just thin that with water. The more water, the more, um, more, well, it'll run more, but it also won't be as opaque. If you want it more opaque, use more, use less water. Okay, as you add this, it's going to look kind of translucent. So this is the thing you have to, well, this actually looks pretty opaque, but you have to plan on when it dries, it is going to be super white, super bright. Like what I'm doing right here, it doesn't look like it's doing much. Wait until I put the, wait until it dries, you'll see what I mean. So don't keep reworking it thinking it's not getting light enough. It will when it dries. So you're kind of working like with one of those magic pens that erase, only the reverse. Or disappear, not erase. That's not the right word. There. You can't even see the line I just did, but as it dries, you definitely will. I'm gonna put a few little dots so it looks sparkly. Right along the edge, and I'm gonna do that in quite a few spots in the water too. Right at where the, the color breaks are. So like here, let's put a few little dots. Don't want too many bright highlights on the tail, just the sparkles. These little areas really start to look shiny, but it works better if the white is right up touching your darker darks. That will make it look much shinier. Like if I put the dots over just the light areas, it's do it doesn't look that shiny. You've got to have that contrast. That is what makes water look all sparkly. I'm going to put a few dots as I move my way around right at that line. And this is definitely something tomorrow with fresh eyes, I may come and add a few more little sparkle dots. But my eyes are definitely starting to get blurry from not taking enough breaks. So like these lines I'm doing right here, I'm going to probably have to tone those back down with color when it, because it's gonna start getting really opaque, way too shiny. I'm 
Actually, we'll see. It might look good how it is. Sometimes it surprises me. I can hit some of these areas, just a few spots where I had done the white pencil, so I can make a few areas just pop a bit more. And I don't notice that I'm not really focusing much back here. I want that to look a little bit further away. It's mostly this area up front that I'm putting these types of details. some of those lines up just about done okay I need to I'm gonna call that done ish I, I'm gonna glaze a little bit of green over that let me while that dries actually let me dry it and then I'm gonna grab the mat and then I can put the glaze I need so, what I'm gonna do is hold the mat in place so that I can get an idea of where I want my signature definitely don't want it over these little circle you guys so it'd be over here Whenever I paint marine life, I put a little dolphin table tail at the end of the H. I almost put 2003, wow. There we go. So see why I did that with the signature, why I held the mat in place? Because if I didn't, I probably would have signed down here. It would have been completely covered by the mat. But because I held this, I was able to see where that signature should be placed. Wow, I really like that white mat. you I see all your unused art supplies over there oh my god those brushes aren't even opened yet tragic you keep buying new fancy materials but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them stop making your art supplies sad sign up for art lessons for as little as four dollars a month there are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up and new ones every week patreon.com slash lockery